Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today I'm going to teach you how to record credit card sales with a third party credit card processor in your QuickBooks online account. This tutorial is one of our 46 free QuickBooks online tutorials that you can find by Googling Fit Small Business QuickBooks online tutorials. Let's get started by looking at our dashboard. So you can receive credit card, you can use a third party credit card processor to process your credit card sales, but you still need to record them in your QuickBooks online account. Obviously, you need to offset any outstanding invoices paid with credit cards, as well as record any sales receipts paid with credit cards. When using a third party credit card processor, it's very important you record these transactions properly or it can very quickly get out of hand and your books will be a complete mess. So follow these steps exactly and you shouldn't have any problem. So first off, let's record a credit card sale on a outstanding invoice. So let's go to our invoices. And we see Trampoline City owes us $100. Let's receive that payment. Okay, so we have Trampoline City. Let's say they paid us, we'll just say that we'll say today's date is fine, the 25th. Actually, let's backdate this a few. Let's backdate this a week. So we'll say it was on the 18th. They paid via credit card. Okay, so you process this with your external credit card processor. Perhaps you want to put in the reference number there. And then in the deposit too, this is extremely important. Don't show this deposit going straight to your bank account because it could be a few days before your credit card processor just deposits it into your bank account and also they're going to combine it with other credit card receipts you have and make one deposit so it's very important that you match your credit card sales into the same deposits group them into the same deposits as your credit card processor so we're going to do that by making the initial deposit to our payments to deposit account Okay, so this is $100 from Trampoline City on the 18th. Let's go ahead and save and close. Okay, let's go ahead and receive the second one of 1172. And let's do the same thing. Let's do it a week ago on the 18th. They paid by credit card, full amount of 1172, and hit save and close. And let's make one more credit card uh, payment here received. So let's go to new. Let's do a credit. Let's do a sales receipt. So somebody comes into our store and buys something. Um, so we'll just choose a customer here. Um, we'll just I will say it's a uh, big time diner. And again, let's do the 18th. They walked in on the 18th. A credit card. Uh, the service date was the 18th and uh, we'll just say they paid for a service contract $100 for a service contract okay so they're going to pay us $106 after tax and so let's hit save and close okay so we've received three credit card payments now where did those payments go they went to our undeposited funds account or what uh, in this company is called payments to deposit so now let's look at making a bank deposit. This is going to pull up all of our payments that are sitting in our undeposited funds account. But we're actually missing one, aren't we? We're missing the one for $106. So let's go back. I probably set that to the wrong account. OK, so let's view all of our sales. Sales receipt $106. Okay, and there we go. I deposited to business checking. That is a really bad mistake. That will make your books into a complete mess very quickly because it won't match the deposit that's coming in from your third party credit card company. So we need to make this to our uh, payments to deposit account. There we go. Okay, save and close. Now, if I hadn't caught it just now, that is something I would catch when I went to do my bank reconciliation. So now let's make our bank deposit. Taking a second. Okay. Now, 
So now in our undeposited funds account, we have these three deposits sitting there waiting to be deposited. You need to leave them in that account until your credit card processing company actually makes a deposit into your checking account. Then what you need to do is you need to match that deposit exactly. So all three of these were made at the same on the same date. That doesn't necessarily mean they'll be deposited into your bank account at the same time. So let's say we finally hear from our credit card processor and let's say that these were charged on the 18th. Let's say they got deposited into our account on the 21st. But we look through and we find the deposit detail and we find out that they only deposited the check the the credit card funds from Big Time Diner and Family Bowling. This Trampoline City charge of $100 is still outstanding. They hadn't deposited it yet. So we're not going to choose to deposit that. We need to match their deposit exactly. And the reason being is when we go to reconcile our bank account, the deposits need to match between what we're doing right now in QuickBooks and what's actually being deposited in the bank account. Otherwise, trying to reconcile your bank account will be a nightmare. Okay, so this is the first part of the deposit. The second part of this transaction is a lot of credit card companies will withhold fees from that deposit. Right? So they're not doing this for free. They're going to charge you a fee, and a lot of times it'll be taken out of that deposit. So we need to show that in our deposit as well, again, so that our deposit in our bank account matches the deposit in our books. So the way we're going to record the expense is we're going to come down here to these additional funds deposited, and we are going to record a negative deposit. So this is going to be our expense um, received from... So we may have to make make a let's make a vendor here. Let's just call it credit card company. Okay, the default's a customer obviously because it's a deposit, but we're gonna make it a vendor. Okay, now here's our expense account. So let's make an expense account credit card fees. Okay, and this is going to be an expense account. And let's call it bank charges. Okay, save and close. Okay, so we're creating a credit card fee. We really don't need a description. The payment method is going to be cash. And we're going to make it, let's say that they are charging us $12. Okay, so it's, we'll say they, they charge us, I don't know, 1%. One, 1%. So let's say it's $12.78. Remember to enter it as a negative number. Oops. Sorry, I think I got my... Okay, negative... 1278 okay and hit um, okay so now we can see we have selected the two deposits being made we've taken out the fee that they're charging us so we have a net deposit of 1265.22 that should match the actual deposit going into your bank account again that's incredibly important um, so that when you reconcile your bank account you don't have a nightmare so make sure that you're putting it into the check the correct checking account and let's click save and close okay there we go now next time they make a deposit we can still go back next time your credit card processing company makes a deposit we can go back And there we go, right? The credit card payment from Trampoline City is still there. Once your credit card company deposits it, you'll want to select it, deposit it, create a negative expense um, here for any fees that they take out of that deposit. Again, so that your total deposit matches exactly what your credit card company put into your account. Okay, now, the only other thing you might have to do, some credit card companies, in addition to per transaction fees that will be taken out of the deposit, they might charge you uh, perhaps monthly fees. If they have any other fees that aren't directly taken out of the deposit, then we just want to record them as a normal expense. So we would go new, expense, and we've already had a tutorial on this, but, right, just credit card company. 
We're going to say it's coming out of our checking account. Okay, and then whatever details you want here. So I think we set up credit card fees, right? And we'll say it's like 20 bucks. You don't have to use a class, but we have classes set up for this uh, example. And there we go. So this is how any fees that aren't netted with your deposit, if the fee shows up as a separate line item on your bank statement, then you need to record it as a separate transaction. If the fee is netted with a deposit, so it's all in the deposit number, then you need to offset it with a negative um, entry into that deposit screen as we did. So we can save and close this. And there we have our credit card expense if it was a separate statement on your bank statement, if it was in a separate line item on your bank statement. Great, so that's how you record credit card sales using a third-party credit card processor in QuickBooks Online. I hope this was helpful. You can find all 46 of our free QuickBooks Online tutorials by Googling Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Tutorials.